Soul, soul, hello, and Labis. We're starting here today at the Sharer home because one Miss Sophia is in fact in labor. Oh, she's having another baby. It's uh, the it's the second. It's the third day of thirteen forty six. It is um, Thursday in game. The baby must be here. Oh, and it's another girl. Uh, I chose the name Aldona if it was going to be a girl. It's a Lithuanian name. I think it's quite pretty. And so there you have it. Oh, listen, Sten, this moment's not about you. So just chill out. Okie dokie. So let's roll for Sophia and Aldona to see if they're going to make it. Sophia really deserves it. So I hope that they do. I hope that they do. To survive having this baby, Sophia cannot roll the numbers 1 or 11. So? Oh, Sophia's fine, thank goodness. And for the baby to survive, she cannot roll the numbers 1, 5, 7, 10, 12, 15, 17, or 20. Oh my gosh, I cannot believe it. The baby has lived? Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh, okay. Wow, 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 wow. Damn. Hot damn. I know that hot damn doesn't sound so good, but, you know, it's good in this case, okay? It's good in this case. Yes! Now, if I sound a bit weird, um, that's because, first of all, first of all, I, um... <laughs> I'm recording this pretty much, whoa, Sophia, pretty much immediately after the last one, because for me, the patch is coming imminently. And we've had a lot of times where we've had to take breaks in the past couple of weeks because of patches, because of mods, because of me being sick. And I just don't want to risk that that happens again. Um, and the other thing while we're paused on this beautiful scene is that I um, I actually have already recorded this episode. However, something went wrong with the audio and it was lost forever. And it's a real bummer because in that version of reality, uh, everybody lived except for Aldona. Aldona is the only Sim who didn't make it. So there's a lot of roles today and now I'm paranoid that somebody else is going down, but I guess we'll have to wait and see. But for now, it is Sophia's birthday, as well as having had that baby. So happy birthday, Sophia. You're becoming an adult today. You're all grown up. You're a big girl. I mean, she already was, but now she really is. Go, Sophia. Look at her over there. Oh, and look at Sten. He's actually being cute for a moment. Wow. She got some serious height, didn't she? Yeah, Sophia aged up. But she isn't the only one who's aged up because <laughs> it's also Sten's teenage birthday today. So go on, Sten, you little cutie. Go on, you can do it, Sten. Wee! <laughs> There he goes. So he is a mean sim. Mean, but lovable and neat. I don't like that as much as whatever his last one was. I can't remember what it was. Oh, last time he got self-absorbed. That's what it was. It was so funny. I think I'm going to give that to him again because I think it, it was hilarious. It was hilarious to me. I was like, what kind of a guy is this? He's mean and self-absorbed. And I just gave him a teen aspiration. He also aged up with a lot less w wild outfits than this last time. What can you do? I'm going to go ahead and, uh, oh, Otto and Sophia just had, I mean, if you guys want to, you're welcome to go and do the old woohoo. I'm going to modify him and then tell you the thing. And that way we can get the rolls over with. Oh my gosh, please let them go well. 
So for Sophia to survive her age up to an adult, she cannot roll the numbers 3, 6, 11, 13, or 18. First one doesn't count, so... She made it! Wow, that's exciting. And for Sten to survive his age up to a teen, he cannot roll the number seven. That's it. Oh my gosh, he cut it close, but he's fine. Will Sten get married? The only numbers he needs to avoid? Oh my gosh, he's not gonna get married? That didn't happen last time. I promise I'll stop comparing the two times. Uh, how many babies will he have the chance to try for? First one doesn't count. Eight? Oh my gosh, he's gonna be a philanderer. I mean, he's self-absorbed and mean. I can kind of see it, but like... Who does he think is going to carry all these babies for him? You know what I mean? Wow, that's crazy. I'll tell you what's crazy in a second. For now, though, I'm going to take off Sophia's evil trait. I don't think it suits her anymore. And, um... Oh, last comparison between the two. In the other one, Sophia became cheerful. And now she's not cheerful. She's still gloomy guts. Boo. I thought it was nice. <laughs> I think he's so handsome. I'm not against his jeans carrying on. Look at this guy. Come on. Look at him. He's a handsome guy. Look at him. He's posing. So basically, at this point in time, ignore the cars in the background. At this point in time, they're still living in the share home away from town because the townspeople are treating them more and more like they are a problem. Alkir's family, Sophia's first husband, his family are quite well liked around town. And so they're very suspicious that Sophia did something to make their grandson Ivor disappear so that she could get the land and the home for her sons, Sten and Randolph. And the other part of the town who don't believe like they do kind of thinks that the Nilsons slash Sophia are cursed. So there's a lot of other people who, when they see them coming, might cross the street and walk on the other side of the road or just flat out try to avoid them. So either way, it's not an ideal situation for these guys. They're basically being treated with a lot more suspicion than they ever have before. And it's kind of bad. Now, you might be wondering where Randolph is. I believe you probably remember that when Isabel had to give up her youth, that, in fact, it wasn't enough for the witches because these witches are meanies. And so they said, you have to stick to the letter of the rule so long as it benefits us. And, in fact, the person who ended up being called forward to give up his youth was Randolph. It was sad. That meant that he had to go through his teenage and young adult role. Oh God, first things first, we have to figure out who owes the debt. I'm too scared to look at this. Oh man, I'm so scared. Uh, ah! Ugh, Randolph, okay. To survive the teenage age up, Randolph cannot roll the number seven. That's it. So, he's fine. And to survive the young adult age up, he cannot roll the numbers six or 14. Okay, he's fine. However, luckily... He did survive. I just stored him in the other room so that he wouldn't be down there and it wouldn't be like a spoiler or anything. Uh, why don't you hug your brother lovingly? But yeah, here he is. Here he is, Randolph. Uh, he's already a young adult now. He's lost like so much of his life. It is so crazy to me. I hate it so much. He was only eight years old and now he's in the body of a young adult. 
I don't know if he emotionally and mentally matured at the same pace as his body did. I kind of assume not. He did roll to get married, and he did roll to have eight baby tries, which is why I thought it was funny when Sten also got eight baby tries. But, excuse me, Sophia, why are you carrying an umbrella inside? Sophia, can you explain your actions? Thank you. Why don't you go to the bathroom, dude? Very strange. But yeah, baby Randolph is no longer a baby. He's in body, at least older than his brother. He did pass his role, so that's the upside. But, you know, it's a pretty big bummer. He looks a lot like Sienna, though, I'm not going to lie. However, he is proper... He's an art lover, but he's also socially awkward, and that's because I feel like he he was just an eight-year-old. Whether or not he emotionally and mentally matured, he's still just, he was just an eight-year-old, and I can't imagine going from being eight years old to suddenly having to talk to grown-ups, you know, as if they're grown, if as if you're a grown-up too. So poor Randolph. He's in the body of a 21-year-old now, regardless of what age he feels. And it's kind of sad. But at least everybody else has survived. Well, I mean, everyone survived their age up, so that's obviously a big, huge win for us. Ugh, football team sports day. So on that note, I'm going to leave these guys and head to the main pains uh, because we're trying to make sure we can get some moolah, get some money, honey, and also because some people have some new friends. So I'll see you when we get to the pain family's house. Okie dokie. So here we are at the pain residence. Uh, everybody has been set some tasks because I don't want to have to micromanage them. But ignore the umbrellas. It's just not that big of a deal to me. I'm sorry. That's just how I feel. You know, I really want to be able to harvest our garden and we still have like another week before we can. It's miserable. We just don't have anything. But... The reason why it's a little bit later in the day is because I had Harper go round and meet a bunch of Sims. You can spread some rumors about Woohoo. And so he's got like a little group of Palos, um, including some of his cousins. So, oh, also some of Luella's family. So there's a, hey, I queued up a bunch of stuff. So Heath is a part of the group and Everson. And Evans, and I should say boy, is part of the group. A uh, Covington. Why won't you talk to anybody? But yeah, this is his group of buddies. So we've got one of Luella's family members. We've got somebody who lives at the girl's house. We've got an Evanson. We've got a Maritia Sigworth. I think she's beautiful. Secretly, I'm hoping Harper ends up with her if he is attracted to women. Heath and James Graystroke are part of the group, and that's pretty nice. And Edgar is also a part of the group. Oh my gosh, I completed his aspiration last time, and now I have to do it all over again. Can you please invite Avalyn over? So yeah, this is all Harper's friends. I'm hoping that he will at some point fall in love with someone. I also, low-key, this guy is also my favorite. I keep thinking if Harper is going to end up with someone, I want it to be Maritza or Kale. Although Kale's a bit of a weird name. But we'll see. We'll see. Maritza's really sad. Somebody died, I think. That's just how things go. Heidi, do you not have a job? Yeah, Heidi, you can like jokes, of course. Aw, oh, it's so cute. Look at them all. Look at them all. A bunch of teenagers. They're all like patting each other on the shoulder. It's so cute. I'm kind of hoping that Harper gets up to something a little bit risque on his own. But we'll see. He didn't last time. 
Nox, where are you going? No, it's not bedtime for you yet, Palo. <gasps> oh no, that's the other thing that happened last time. Last time we found another bottle of Vitality Nectar. And I thought, oh, now we have a second chance. Or the Evanson boy. I'd be okay with something happening with the Evanson boy. That's just my thoughts on the matter. Uh, Heidi, why don't you polish this and go and grab a serving? Are you okay, kiddo? You're just standing there doing nothing. Why don't you ride your rocking horse and the uh, player's xylophone and stack some stuff or whatever, you know? Sadly, I've noticed that this Marsmerizing Sims uh, Castle Dweller dress from the Castle Dweller set, it's been visually glitching. I've seen it in some other Ultimate Decades as well as uh, this one. It's kind of sad, but what can you do? What can you do? We're just going to have them do a little bit more chitter chatter and then I'll send everyone home and we'll open the shop. We've currently got 7,717 simoleons. Wow, what an odd number to have. Are you guys friends yet? Fantastic. Are you able to replace this water? No. Well, I already thought Heidi was neat, so I'm a little bit shocked it just had that pop up. I guess she must not be. Does this need to be cleaned? Oh, yeah. Collect the eggs. That's exciting. Luella, I don't know. Like, what do you want to do? Do you want to go collect the honey, actually? That would be really helpful. Well, guys, it was fun hanging out. Thanks for coming over. I'm going to go ahead and end this gathering, and that way Harper can get something to eat. And we can open up the live-in store, because it doesn't run very well when their clubs are here because their clubs are so big oh no the alien is back listen why are you wearing your alien outfit and not real clothes that's what i care most about you're really breaking up the immersion also who was your alien ancestor hmm why is heidi feeling flirty Oh man, these banana cream pies, I'm only making them whenever we've got the plantains that we find in the garden, but... Oh, that's cute. But man, oh man, when we... Uh, don't do it. When we find the plantains and we make those banana cream pies... Whew, it is like... Amazing. I guess something that we can talk about is that the last time we talked about the Hundred Years War and the part of the war that really just kind of throws me off. I think life is here. Oh, hey, buddy. Oh, anyway, so last time we talked about the Hundred Years War and um, thanks, whoever bought that mead. Thanks, Leif. Leif, you're like the best. <gasps> Thanks, whoever bought our pie. Atticus. Wow, what a name, Atticus. You really went for quite the name. But yeah, last time we were talking about the Hundred Years' War and something that I originally said, but it didn't make it into the cut because it was quite long already, was that while Edward III was away at war with his son against the French, he left his wife, Philippa of Hainault, in command of England as the regent. And while he was away, David Bruce of Scotland was encouraged by Philip or Philippe the Sixth, the King of France, to invade England, especially because Edward was away. But by October, Philippa had raised around 12,000 men to stop David. And not only that, but she knew that if she was seen by the people, it would help to sort of make them more energized to work against Bruce. So she personally herself traveled to Newcastle upon Tyne, rode on a white horse from battalion to battalion, and spoke encouraging words to the men who were there. 
And the battle that followed after she did that, not only were the English victorious, but also they captured David Bruce. And I think that's kind of interesting because it's like, you know, she was kind of a boss lady. You know what I mean? Avalyn, I didn't realize you were still here. I'm so sorry. I would have sent you home. Avalyn's really going through it these days. She came over angry and now she's leaving sad, but she did have a baby. Her baby has been born, so... That's exciting. Lowell is just going to finish this and collect these and then she'll go to bed. Hey, thanks for purchasing our mead, Agatha. Agatha's such a supportive sim. She's always helping us by buying our things. She supports small businesses. That's what it is. Oh, Knox wants to have a child again? Ooh, buddy, I don't know about that. Who else is ready to wake up? You, awaken, young sir. Is there anything that needs to be, oh, can you collect the compost? Please do, that would be very helpful after you go to the bathroom. And then you could go scatter some feed for these chickens. Oh my, can you please come and spray this area if you don't mind? We're gonna have Edgar work on helping these guys out. Oh yeah, the feathers, that's what it was. And then he's gonna be in charge of weeding because after this one, his goal is going to be the smart brain aspiration. Cannot remember what it's called. So smart brain aspiration it is, you know what I mean? Harper, are you ready to get up? Cause I see some mini sheep, some mini goats that need some love, some tender love and care, hassle free. Mm. Thank you, Enrique. Ah, oh, and then you're on weeds, Palo. Oh yeah, so since the next one's gonna be smart brain aspiration, it just makes sense to have him out there taking care of that. Hello, Goatzilla, how did I know it would be you coming to get taken care of? Cause you're just such a happy little goat. Luella, did you finish that? Fantastic. Would you kindly come over here and uh, press some more honey for us? If you don't mind. Okay, that's it. Someone has to go hunting. We don't have anything. You, sir, you're going hunting. We're gonna owe 200 simoleons. And Heidi, once you've done that, I actually need you to go foraging. There you go, Edgar. You're gonna be the smartest boy all around. As for you, kid, why don't you get up? Yeah, I noticed he's a heavy sleeper. It's like 9 a.m. What is, do you think this is? The vacation world? Is this holiday land? Hey there, Missy. What's your name? Gwendolyn, you have a proper outfit. I know you do, so I'm not sure why you're not wearing it. But I think it's rude. Can I be honest with you about that? Luella, can you make anything... Seed porridge. Oh, we need more seeds. Oh, thank you so much, Edgar. Look at you over here cleaning up autonomously. What a young, a young cutie pie you are. Why don't you go potty first and then you can ride your rocking horse, Paolo. Kenrick is not going to be quite the same boy as he grows up, I don't think. Oh, because he thinks authority is a sham. Why are you sick? Why is everyone sick all the time? Oh, what am I doing? We could have purchased stuff from here. Oh, you guys, I've lost it. I've started to lose it. Are you in the bathtub? Harper, please don't bother your dad when he's in the bathtub. If you don't mind. You can go and grab a serving. What are you doing? You can go and grab a serving. Heidi, you're hungry as well. Why don't you go and grab a serving? After you finish that, you can also grab a serving. And I'll let you finish uh, what you're doing there first and then you can grab a serving. Okay, Harper, what did we come back with? We've got some milk. Okay, I guess I'll put it in here. We've got hair. Thank you, Agnes. The sale is going a lot more successfully today than it had before, so at least that's something. 
Are you almost finished over here? Like, why is it taking so long? I think there's only one more left. Ooh, Elisabetta. Elisabetta de Luna. She is in a labor. <gasps> we'll go over there as soon as Luella gets back. Hopefully she gets back soon. I oh, don't know. She's taken an awfully long time. I don't like leaving it too late. All right, so here we are at uh, a place in Tortosa. This place is kind of like a little mini city, and it's very specifically been kept away from town proper because the people who live here are not allowed to ply their wares in town as it is. We do have a pregnant sim down here, Elisabetta de Luna, which I'm probably saying wrong, but now I cannot stop saying it that way. I have tried, I have tried multiple times, and she is off to have a baby, so we're going to just go along for the ride with her. Good luck in class, Yoris. Be a good university student, please. Go, Elisabetta, go! You can do it. You look stunning. I have never seen a woman give birth looking as stunning as you look. <laughs> and it's a boy. I decided that if it was a boy, she would name him Eduardo de Luna. Great work, Lizabetta. You did it. You did it. I wish that it was more than one, but alas, it is just the singular babe. The singular wee babe. So for Lizabetta to successfully have this child, she cannot roll the numbers 1 or 11, that's it. So she's fine. And for the baby to survive, he cannot roll the numbers 1, 5, 7, 10, 12, 15, 17, or 20. Oh my gosh, I cannot believe that. Honest to God. I thought for sure, because this baby was successful last time, I thought for sure this baby was going down hard. But nope, nope, the baby's fine. So, whoop, woo. Ah, that's exciting. Now you might be wondering, why on earth do we care about this random Sims pregnancy? And the answer is, because it's not just her pregnancy, it's also Yoris's baby. <laughs> oh, that reminds me. Dang, I should have him work hard. I mean, if he's going to school anyways, he should, you know, be taking notes. Like, what are we? People trying to fail at school? That's now, Lizabetta works in a career. It's the oldest career available to women and she works in that career and has done for quite a while she's very successful Aww. you can tell she's got nice clothes she's got nice jewelry she's well taken Aww. well okay we'll talk about the housing situation later but basically she's a well-known lady she's very good at what she does she has a lot of very happy clients and Yoris, as we know, is a student who has just moved to Tartosa in the Mediterranean to have a life of a scholar. And some of the other students think of it as a rite of passage, if one has not been with a lady before, to go and be with a lady. What better way to become grown than to... Uh, uh, enter into that next stage of one's life, you know? And so, in fact, Yoris came and spent some time with her. And so now they have a child together. But that's why she only had to avoid rolling the numbers 1 and 11 and didn't have to worry about any other numbers. Now, in case you're wondering where Yoris is living, he lives here as well. There's some squalid little flats that he can rent over here. The hallway is basically a kitchen so that they don't starve. This is his room. It is teeny tiny, as you can tell. Very teeny tiny. He's got a bed. He's got a desk. And he's lucky because he actually has a fireplace. The room next to his doesn't even have a fireplace. It just has the bed and the side table. It doesn't even have a desk or anything. And then they have kind of a shared bathroom. It is nothing special. It is just there. That's it. 
And then over here is another, it's like an okay place that you could rent. It's just another bed with a chair and again, a fireplace. And that's kind of that part of the building. However, this building is right next to another building that is supposed to be kept outside of town because in medieval times, a lot of the times in cities, there were rules about where one could do the kind of trade that the women who live here do. And it normally it wasn't within city walls. So these ladies live over here. But yeah, there's some gambling, there's some drinking establishments, there's some oops, raunchy tapestries over there. I mean, not raunchy, some risque tapestries. There's a beautiful lady with a young child and no husband in sight. Oh my gosh. Clutch your pearls. Could it be so? Oh. Are you okay? She's just over here standing at the stop of... Are, is she okay? What is she doing? Uh, you can dislike pranks, but like, who were you even talking to? From the top of the stairs? Oh no, there's some weird stuff going on here, guys. This is the other lady who works at this establishment, Julien Pelly. I'm probably saying that wrong as well, but she's a teenager like Yoris. And um, she's an interesting character. We'll talk about her in a while. But these two have their own quarters here that are their own. The owner of this establishment, who is not a very nice guy, it gives them their personal quarters. They do not work out of these rooms. But this is where Elisabetta lives with her son, Paolo. She's had Paolo for a while. He's a child. Uh, they have a pretty nice balcony. But they aren't exactly free to leave whenever they want to. Like, the balcony kind of keeps them in. It's not like they can hop over the edge. And then inside, all of the windows are barred. The doors are barred downstairs. And they don't exactly have the freedom to come and go as they please. This is the room of Julianne. And she lives over here. It's not as established because she's newer to this trade. But again, it's the same thing. I actually, yeah, she's got this one window here also barred. She doesn't even have a balcony. And then they ply their trade out of these two rooms over here. But the owner of this establishment, in my mind, basically is really good at entrapping people. So he ends up tricking people into coming and working for him by getting them indebted to him. So Julian and Lizabetta both are somewhat indebted to him. And the problem with a guy like this is that no matter how much money they make, the debt never seems to be finished. Can you please discipline him? Oh, okay. Teach him to say sorry then. Now, Yoris really doesn't feel anything about Lizabetta. Like, they have a bit of romance from what they did. And because Elizabeth is a bit of a flirt, you know? Um, but the funny thing is that he does have feelings for Julianne. So when he'd already done the deed with Lizabetta, he then saw Julianne and said that she was extremely attractive and they've autonomously been flirting very innocently. It is so funny because they've just been autonomously flirting innocently. I mean, I think you probably just saw he just autonomously got a desire to interact with her again. So they kind of like each other, even though she's in this position and he's being a student. But what's crazy is that yours only has the one baby dry. So that baby, that baby upstairs, Eduardo, is the only baby that yours is going to be having. Do you know what I mean? See, he's autonomously talking to her. Man, these guys have so many pop-ups right now. Now, in terms of Julian, she's 
Ugh. Kind of. She does not like Lisbetta at all um, because she feels like Lisbetta gets all of the respect oh, that she feels like yeah. she deserves, even though lisabetta has been here for much wow. longer. And also, Julian feels like people judge her, which in fairness, they do, uh, because a fun fact oh, about this time period is that being vain was actually super duper looked down on. And no women did actually try and eliminate their body hair. And so they would pluck, but if you were found to have plucked, the preacher, the priest would basically tell you, give you a lecture about the dangers of vanity. What is your deal? Like, chill out, girlfriend. Why don't you apologize? And even though you didn't do anything. Yours basically is just getting along with these ladies. I mean, they all live in the same little area pretty far away from town. So they kind of have to. You know what I mean? Don't worry about talking to her. She's already provided food for everyone. He's really good friends with Paolo de Luna. And I went back and forth about Yoris having a child before the plague, especially since he can only have one. But then I thought, well, what if we lose Yoris and we never even have a chance? This way, at least his genes have a chance to go down. Oh my gosh, you stomping around is too much. Just too much, madam. But I feel like we will pop over here to see him in Italy, even though he won't be having any more kids, because I feel like it's kind of interesting to be able to look at this side of stuff. I did do a cast video about, you know, some beauty expectations for women who worked in this career. However, why don't you go jog to clear your mind? <laughs> But in terms of what it was like to be a university student in the Middle Ages, students were known for stirring up trouble in the cities that they went to. Uh, there are lots of accounts of students fighting against townspeople because the townspeople perceive the students as being too loud or for drinking too much or destroying the areas around there, whereas the students perceive the townspeople as overcharging them for various services. But yeah, this is where he's living. He lives right next to two, two ladies of ill repute. <laughs> but we'll pop in on him, talk about beauty standards at this time, as well as what it was like to be a student, and just see how things go. So I'll see you when we get back to the pains. I'd kind of been hoping that yours would have a girl because I think that Lisabetta is the most, Lisabetta is the most beautiful sim. Oh my gosh, I'm obsessed with her. I am obsessed with her. <laughs> but alas and alack, instead he had a boy, but at least the boy lived. I'm pretty content with that because honestly, I've got to say, I didn't think that the odds were very good for his son surviving, especially after he'd been successful with the role the last time. I thought, mm -mm, no way is it going to be successful this time. You know, the numbers are just so stacked against them. But it did end up working out OK, so all's well that ends well, right? There we go go. Everything's getting sorted. The shop should still be open. But now we're going to have Edgar's friendos come over. And I'm hoping that since he's going to have some friends as a child, that that means that he's also going to have an easier time with romantic prospects and we don't have to suffer as much trying to find some then again, these are all townies and they may not survive the plague because townies are getting rolled for. They're all sad because there's been a real outbreak of ends for Sims lately. Um, I know because when I went around to meet a bunch of them and I saw inside of their homes, it was just urn after urn, you know? It was just urns everywhere. It was crazy. It was all urns all the way. <laughs> it was wild. Are we all going to be pals? Esmond, can we harvest this? Dang it. I'm so bummed about not getting that other thing. Oh, yeah, because you guys wouldn't have seen. We've got a bunch of townies in here, but also Idis is in here, our cousin Idis. I know that really it's a bit far, but we we still brought her in. 
We've got some of the Lancaster girls in here, even though they're too upper class for us. Yeah, we're not high class enough, but doesn't matter. Ooh, maybe when they're teenagers, they can, like, have a goal to kiss each other and stuff. And it can be, like, a little kissing party. Oh, that'll be so cute. It'll be like they're all excited because it'll be their first kisses. Um, where is everyone? Come and buy our things, please. Nox, no. Please fill this in bottles. And then press the honey again. Sorry, pal. But you're the one who wanted to have the meat aspiration, so... And then you can eat something. How long until this goes off? Five hours. We're fine. Is anybody else hungry? Luella's pretty hungry. That's about it. Heidi. Heidi is so flirty with her husband. What now? She wants to do something romantic and schedule a date. They should go on a date. I feel like I've been saying that for years at this point. I want our produce. Oh, I don't think we're getting along very well with Kira of Lancaster. So I give up. Give up on her. Who are we get? We're friends with Jared Baker. Jared Baker. I think that's somebody related to Luella. Are we related to you? Oh yeah, he's our cousin. Oh, that's exciting. He's a cousin I didn't know that we had. Have we got a second pal? Yes, we do. That's exciting. Who wants to be the final friend? Joke about cartoons. We're going to push just a little bit into the next one because I'd really like to finish his aspiration so that the next time we can come in and be working on the next aspiration. So I think I mentioned that Luella's goal for her sons is that they do as much as humanly possible to become as skilled as possible in the hopes that they go on to be as successful as possible in the future, so. Aw, oh, thank you for purchasing our mead, sir. Oh, thank you, Henry of Grosmont. Always coming through for us, you know, Henry. Oh, Henry, though. I saw something. It's a secret. Well, do we want to do motor next? Do we want to do motor next? Or do we want to do mental next? Finish homework two times while focused? That's going to be a problem. I guess we can cheat that or replace it with something else. Yeah, we'll have to cheat that one. <gasps> But let me know what you think we should replace it with. In the meantime, I'm going to do Rambunctious Scamp for him for the next one. We've got 13 days. We might be able to even do the other four. You know, today wasn't such a bad day in the end. Um, I believe my notes are now mixed up from the two times that I've recorded this. But I believe that we started with 7,717 simoleons. We've finished... Now the sale with 11,351, which means that we made 3,638, but we do owe 40% taxes between the king, the earl, and the church. So that's about 1454 that we owe, but that means that we'll be left with 9,897, which is not so bad. But on that note, it's officially the beginning of 1347. So I'm going to leave this part here. In the background, what happened is a lot of stuff. Osmond Woodhams became a teenager. Henrika of Narva became a child and her brother was doing totally fine as well. Gibsmith became a toddler too. And Conrad Brewer from Alexander and Gita also became a child totally fine. So all in all, it was a good year, and not only that, but doing it again, nobody died. So it was a major success. So I hope that you've enjoyed this part. Thank you so much for watching. As always, leave your thoughts and ideas in the comment section below, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye, everyone.